What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video on Metal Reacts where today we have our first album review that we've had in a long, long time on this channel. Um, maybe, I guess a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, I had a couple that I posted. I remember doing Death Heaven and Zeal of Ar uh, Zeal and Ardor and Obscura and uh, I did a review for... Imperial Triumphant, and a few others, I think. But, yeah, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I've had a lot of trepidation and, and anxiety about filming this video, actually. Because, number one, I haven't done one in a while, but number two, this uh, this freaking record, man, it's uh, MMXX, which is a Doom supergroup, and their album, Sacred Cargo... This album is monstrous. Number one, it's got the drummer and the bass player from Daylight Dies. And it's got the guitar player from The Foreshadowing. They came together and they created this super group. And if you don't know anything about Daylight Dies or The Foreshadowing, definitely need to... Uh, check those out. I would suggest um, Days of Nothing by The Foreshadowing and um, I think it's called A Frail Becoming by Daylight Dies. Check out those albums. If you're a fan of Doom, you, you're not going to be disappointed. There's, it's some of the best Doom you'll, you'll ever hear, especially modern Doom, Death Doom. And yeah, they they formed a super group and they've got all kinds of features on this freaking record, man. Like every song almost is featuring a different vocalist from a different Doom or Death Doom band. I'm just going to go through some of the names. These are not all of the names, but it's the majority of them. First of all, on the first track, we have Miko Katamaki or Kotamaki from Swallow the Sun. Track number three, we've got Jan Ligner or Ligner from Clone, which I don't know anything about Clone, but that was one of my favorite songs on the album, and it's actually one of the songs I'm going to go into an in-depth review of during this review, so I thought I would include him on there because I think he did a great job. Marco Benevento from The Foreshadowing, love his voice, love his vocals. Um, again, if you haven't heard of The Foreshadowing before, Check out that album, Days of Nothing. It's fantastic. The opener on that album, Cold Waste, is one of my favorite Doom songs of all time. Um, they've got him on here. They've got Carmelo Orlando from November. Or November. I never knew how to say that properly. But they're a Doom band that I used to listen to back a long, long time ago when I was in college. And he's on here. Um, Aaron Stainthorpe, the legend, the living legend from My Dying Bride is on the title track, Sacred Cargo. And then on the 10th track, um, they've got Dan Swano from Edge of Sanity. And Dan Swano, as many of you who are watching this will, will know, Dan Swano is all over the place in the metal underground. He is another living legend. I think as a vocalist and a producer, he's been involved in countless projects. Um, but a side note about him, and I have to say, I know this song is called Shadow Haven. It's the closer on the album. I know that's the most listened to song on this album. If you go to Spotify and you look at the top songs, I didn't really like his voice on that song. And I heard uh, Dan Swano on another track by a band that I that I love called Winds, and Dan Dan Swano was a guest vocalist on one of their albums. I think it was Prominence and Demise, and I didn't like him very much on that album either. So I don't know what it is with me and Dan Swano, but I just I don't think I'm a big fan of his voice. So, but yeah, but anyway, I respect the guy. I know he's he's uh, contributed a lot to the metal world. So, but he's on here. This album is just freaking insane, man. It's like, and it came out of nowhere. I, didn't, I wasn't even aware that this thing was being made, and I didn't hear about it. Talk, I didn't hear it being talked about by any of the major metal YouTube channels or, um, you know, 
publications or news outlets or anything like that. It just seemed like it dropped out of the sky. Actually, I should say, my Uncle Vance put me onto this album. He sent uh, me a text message and said, hey, check this out. It's pretty good. It's got members from Daylight Dies and the Foreshadowing. It's cool. And he was he definitely knocked it out of the park with this recommendation because this album, I think it's fantastic. The The only song I wasn't really too fond of was probably uh, track number seven, just because I thought the vocals were a little bit weird. But there's barely a bad song on this freaking album. And um, I'm only going to go into depth about two of the songs. Um, and then I'm going to give some last comments, final comments, and then I'm going to conclude the album review. So the first um, song I want to talk about is the third track. It's called The New Forgotten Ones. And this is the one featuring Jan Ligner. And he's from a band called Clone. I never, it's spelled with a K, K L O N E. I've never heard of that band, so maybe I need to check that band out because I loved his vocals on this track. Uh, it opens just like a foreshadowing song, like uh, that opening with those really reverb, clean guitar uh, notes, and then the, the drum rhythm reminded me of Death is Our Freedom off of Days of Nothing. So that was kind of cool. But uh, uh, the singer also, I noticed he has a bit of a higher voice than a lot of the other vocalists on this uh, project. And sometimes that can be a detriment, but I think in this case it works out really well. I think it provides a cool contrast with the dark, melancholic mood of the music to have this vocalist who's got a bit of a higher register. Um, let's see. It's not, it doesn't have the, the song doesn't have the best guitar riff on the album. But it is driving, and it does get you into that mode of having that slight head nod or that head bang that you expect in metal. E even doom metal, even though doom metal is slow, and I call a lot of doom metal and death doom to be, I call it sad boy music. Even though that's what most of it is, it's, you still want to have that, uh, oomph, you know, that kind of like driving sort of riff in there somewhere. And uh, the layered guitars sounded really nice. They did this twice in this song, but at the two minute mark, and then again at the four minute and 30 second mark, there were two breaks in the music where the music went from being at a certain level of intensity, a certain volume, and then it just, the, the floor dropped out and it went all the way back down. And uh, then they got into my favorite part of the song, which is. Uh, Three minutes in, let's say, um, that vocal line, that vocal melody. I'll see if I can play it for you here. I've got uh, the new Forgotten Ones on my computer. I'm going to see if I can move the camera and just play this bit for you right here. That sounds so cool. Yeah, I'm not going to do that again because I don't want to move the camera around too much. But uh, yeah, that was, I love that. That got me, like when I heard that, it just, it, it hooked me into the song and it made me remember the song and go back to it. I love that part. Um, he sounds almost like uh, a voice from like alternative metal, it sounds like. And it's weird to hear him on this track. But again, I think it go it went over really well. And it's just a cool contrast of like dark and light, you know. Um, let's see. Yeah, again, at... At a, I want to say about the four minute and 50 second mark, there was an awesome, awesome guitar lead 
at that part in the song. It's super melancholic, dark. And then they return to the excellent vocal layering that I just showed, that I just put on display there uh, by Jan. And uh, the guitars in this song were just beautiful to match his voice. It's just a beautiful song all the way around. It's a bit long for a Death Doom song. It's 6 minutes and 17 seconds. But I wasn't at any point in the song waiting for something to happen or waiting for it to change or waiting for it to end or waiting for it to start or waiting waiting at all. I just really enjoyed this song. Um, it's a pretty complex song in my book as far as this genre goes. I think complexity is generally, we're talking about genres like prog and other genres that tend to be more ambitious in their song structures and songwriting. This song was pretty ambitious for this record, so... I think it might be the longest song on the record. I'm not sure. Anyway, love that song. Uh, the next song I want to talk about is, of course, the title track, Sacred Cargo, which is the eighth track on the album, featuring the man himself, Aaron Stainthorpe, uh, from My Dying Bride. Uh, this, uh, The opening riff in this song is probably the best riff on the album. It's just killer. It sounds just like something off of a frail, a frail becoming, something that Daylight Dies would do. Um, yeah, it's super dark, foreboding. And then they come in with this sake, the spoken word by Stainthorpe, and he's got a weird effect on his voice. Now, I don't mind spoken word. I think it can go over well in genres like this, especially genres like... Uh, um, that are a little bit more dark and mysterious genres like black metal, for example. I think spoken word could, could come into great effect. I think in Death Doom it can be used to great effect. I didn't have a problem with that aspect of it, but he had this weird effect over his voice that was making it sound like it was coming through a loudspeaker or a megaphone or something. I didn't really like that part of that uh, section. Um, I like Aaron's voice when it's naked, when it's stripped back, when it's by itself. I think he's got a really interesting tone and a really killer delivery for this style of music. Um, yeah, like I said before, they saved some of their best riffs for this song. Let's see, uh, Stainthorpe's growl at the 2 minute and 15 second mark. His growl is just awesome it's it's got the perfect amount of force power but also grit in there as well in that in that gravelly sound that we expect from that uh, vocal style it's just perfect man um yeah at two minutes and 30 seconds another choice on the track that i wasn't too thrilled about but i don't think it ruined the track was the keyboard uh i think it just uh it, it works without being overpowering, but it was close. I mean, if it had been any louder in the mix, it would have killed that section. I think they were using some kind of string patch, like it sounded like it wanted to be like a violin or something. Um, but I would have appreciated, like I wrote here as I was listening to the song over and over, um, I wish instead of using keyboard, they would have used real strings at that section. And I know it's hard to find string players especially if you're working on something for just one song or one little part one little part of one song it's kind of asking a lot to go out and get those kinds of instruments and have people do do uh features for those parts but i would have really enjoyed hearing uh an actual violin during that section um instead of the keyboard cuz the keyboard you could tell it was digital and it just didn't sound very good over the guitars um, yeah, at the four minute mark, there's a pause, just like in the last song, in this song, again, they had a break in the music where it was at a certain level of intensity and then the floor just dropped out and it went way, way, way down and got real quiet and it was like they were starting the song over again. Um, that was at four minutes and then Aaron Stainthorpe's clean vocals came in and he sounded magnificent on this song when he sang clean. Man, it sounded like he's come a long way since some of his work with My Dying Bride. I mean, he's always been a very distinct and unique vocalist. 
but I think his ability to actually be melodic and carry a tune and and hit certain notes, I think he's gotten it. I think he's really improved in that area. Um, I can tell based on his work on this song and a lot of the My Dying Bride stuff that I grew up listening to and loving. I feel like he's come a long way in that area. So that was really cool. Um, let's see. What else did I put on here? Oh, yeah. They they had a singing section from Aaron Stainthorpe. And then uh, they had more of those digital simulated strings to close the song out. And yeah, I, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I just wish they would have gotten some real strings for those sections. Uh, but overall, I thought it was a strong song, a really good song. And I can tell that they have a lot of respect for Aaron Stainthorpe, but putting him on the title track of the album, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty freaking cool that he's on this record. So yeah, those were my two favorite songs. <clears throat> Or I should say, uh, my favorite songs might change as I listen to the album more. Because I, I favorited this entire album. It's on my Spotify. I can listen to it whenever I want. Um, I put a couple of the songs. I put these two that I've just talked about. I put them both on my Spotify playlist. Which is like a playlist of all my favorite songs ever. So these two are going to be on there. And yeah, thank you, Vance. I don't know if you're going to watch this video, but uh, thank you for recommending this to me. I can't believe I've stumbled across one of what I believe is, you know, one of the best albums of 2022 this late in the year. You know, usually by the time um, October rolls around, usually by that time, I kind of have my end of the year list already set in stone and I don't really change it that much. So this is pretty cool. So yeah, great album. All of you should check it out. If any of you who were involved in making this album see this video and want to leave a comment, that would make my freaking month. That would make my year. That would be amazing. So yeah, I, I love this album. I can't say enough good things about it. I'd give it like a 9 out of 10. It's not a 10 out of 10 probably because I haven't listened to it enough, but... It's definitely, when I first heard it, I knew it was good, and then the more I listened to it, I just began to enjoy it more and more and more. And there are songs on here like uh, Unavailing, the sixth track, um, Perdition Mirror, uh, featuring Mick Moss, the second track, um, Faint Flickering Light, the fourth track, other songs that I haven't even mentioned or gotten into that I really enjoyed. So it's not like I just enjoyed those two tracks. I mean, I genuinely enjoy this album, almost the, the entire thing. So yeah, uh, check this album out, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what songs or albums you would like me to see me react to or review on this channel. Um, I hope you're having a good day for Metal Reacts. Uh, that's the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.